go past through the back streets. A lot of the streets are still messed up. Still have a lot of empty houses around here. A lot of people didn't come back. So it rained for five minutes, heavy rain, and all of this part of the street was flooded. Flooding is a fact of life in New Orleans. Today, locals realize that for their city to survive, they must learn to live with water. Fortunately, residents of the city's Gentilly district are ready for the challenge. This was a city of uh, just over 400,000 people prior to Katrina. And with more than 80% of the city flooded, uh, this was devastating. And because it was a major infrastructure failure and those infrastructure repairs take a long time, the ability for people to even return to the city was incredibly compromised. Uh, but in the at the same time, it's allowed many people to look at the city in a different way and renew our commitment to it. And then also to say, maybe we weren't doing everything the way we should have. Most of the world knows about the Lower Ninth Ward, what doesn't often get publicized is the rest of the city that also was below sea level, that also uh, faced these major infrastructure failures. And today we're investing in all of those. Um, Gentilly is probably our best example because as a place that was de devastated by many accounts, uh, as much as the Lower Ninth Ward, had as much water, um, the, today we're investing hundreds of millions of dollars in the transformation of that district. Today in New Orleans, Many residents are frustrated that their concerns about flooding are not being heard by the authorities. But a new project called I See Change is seeking to empower local communities by enabling them to share their personal experiences of flood events and to use this information to make the city more resilient against water hazards. The project's founder is the journalist and academic Julia Kumari Drapkin whom I met at the fall meeting of the American Geophysical Union, which took place in New Orleans in December. Uh, IC Change allows uh, community members to make observations and ask questions about what's changing with weather and climate on their phones. Uh, their observations and their stories and their questions are synced with weather and satellite data and then broadcast to our community of scientists, journalists, and other citizens um, to allow the entire community to investigate in real time. And so uh, on IC Change in New Orleans, IC Changers are posting about uh, every storm and they're measuring every storm with rain gauges. So not only are we seeing uh, the impacts of flooding, we're actually able to understand what kind of storm event created that flooding pattern. And with those two bits of data, we can actually model using community data and community stories how these storms are impacting our daily lives. And it's not just about the data. People on Icy Change in Down Tilly have been telling us about how their kids are impacted, how they can't play in their front yard because it's full of debris, how uh, elderly uh, folks are, are having a hard time getting the doctor. Um, and some people even identified that we had issues with our pumps and our drainage long before the rest of the community knew. Puppy, what do you want? Literally, just one day, somebody knocked on my door and I opened it and I was like, Hi, can I help you? And you know, she was like, Hey, we've noticed that there's been flooding at your corner. Um, you know, and Julia kind of told me about what icy change is and how they were trying to like track the flooding and all of that and rain events and asked if I would be interested in, you know, just kind of like posting pictures whenever I noticed it. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it's an app that's super easy. I can just upload photos. It's not super inconvenient or anything. Um, so, you know, when it first started, I literally was just like, okay, like I'll do this to make this lady happy, like once or twice, whatever. And then I ended up becoming really, really involved in it. Um, just, I mean, it has such an impact on my life that I was like, I'm gonna post about this every time. That way people will pay attention to it. We haven't really had much rain, so, I mean, there's not much in here. But, I mean, all we do is, you know, check and see where it's at. 
dump it out. So how often would you normally check it? Um, I generally check it every time it rains. Um, if it's raining really heavily, I'll check it, you know, like every 30 minutes just to see how fast the rain is falling in comparison to what's happening. We have a camera on this pole over here that does time-lapse photos. So, I mean, Julia could see at the start of the rain event, you know, the street wasn't covered. And then five minutes in, you can see where the rain is and then 15 and 30. And this event, I think it was, it was really only about maybe 40 minutes of rain and it took about six hours to completely drain out of the road. Yeah. So when you look out and you see it building up, I mean, are you worried that it's then going to come in and actually flood the house um, itself? I mean, it's, it, I, can, I get concerned about like how far up into my yard it is um, because we end up with like a line of trash through the yard. Like all the debris that's in the street gets washed up into our yard. Um, and then, you know, it's not safe since we have, I have a toddler here. It's not safe for him to be out here and all of that. Um, the only time I've ever been concerned about it actually getting in the house was on August 5th. And that's when, I mean, we had rain. I don't even know how much it rained, but it, the, everything in the city was flooded. The reason that this city exists is also the reason that it's threatened. And we're in a place where the Mississippi River becomes the Gulf of Mexico. And it's unique in many ways in, on this continent. And there are only a few other places in the world that have similar geographies, being at the end of a delta, and a delta that drains 41% of the United States. So we're at a very low elevation. Most of the city's development had to do with draining cypress swamps that had existed for thousands of years. We've also come to really understand in the wake of Katrina, in the wake of uh, other infrastructure failures around the world, that we can't count on walls and pumps to save us all the time. So taking a natural or a nature-based approach to live with water, to restore our wetlands, to uh, welcome water back into our city, uh, is we found is really the only path forward. In the Gentilly district, the Mirabeau Water Garden will transform a 25-acre open site into a recreation area that can also help to manage stormwater. The land has been donated to the city by the Sisters of St. Joseph and will have a landscape pond that can store up to 45 million litres of water diverted from street drainage pipes. Meanwhile, water can also infiltrate through the garden's organic soils, which will help to limit the subsidence of land. So we've been experimenting with creative ways to express what we learned from this investigation uh, back in the neighborhood. So we paint the sidewalks uh, where we see flooding and kind of write down the rain rates. Uh, we've been marking off subsidence using ropes in the neighborhood. We've been having pop-up block parties to talk about the history of the neighborhood as a swamp and kind of what it, how it behaves during all these storm events, trying to bring the data and the information back to those who really are impacted by it. At the AGU conference, Julia presented a poster of IC Change's findings using data provided by Destiny. The day before the presentation, Julia popped round to Destiny's house to give her the first viewing. But then here's the exciting part. So remember when you first started posting on IC Change, you said every time it rains, it floods? Yes. Here's the data that proves that you're actually right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't need data. I, mean, I know I'm right. Oh, yeah. I know, I know, I know. We all know that you're right. <laughs> but what was really interesting is that just this is the average storm occurrence. Yeah. And so what was really interesting about that is that if we don't pay attention to places that flood during the average rainstorm, then when the really big rainstorm hits, that's what creates these catastrophic problems. Yeah. Right? And so it was your rain gauge data plus the time lapse photos that we used to make this hiatograph. Another flooding hotspot in Gentilly is St. Bernard Avenue near Prey Lee's restaurant. Julia and the IC Change team are working with the restaurant owner, Bryant Lee, to engage his community in creative ways, which don't always require smartphone apps. For example, Bryant placed a box on the front of his counter for people to share their personal accounts of flooding in the area. Brian also helped to create images and audio stories from flooding events, which led to a pop-up art exhibit and a block party. Danny Seafood, that's my grandfather. Okay. He had a restaurant 
back in the days, uh, my dad is a chef, my brothers, a couple of my uncles are chefs as well. So it's just something we do. We like it's in the, in the family, it's in the yeah. blood. How, how has this area changed since Katrina? How has this, this, this neighborhood? Uh, well, like I said, I was living in New Orleans East. Yeah. Did, did you know anything about this area? Before? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. you go past through the back streets, a lot of the streets are still messed up. Still have a lot of empty houses around here. Mm. A lot of people didn't come back. Uh, maybe it was like a flood zone for them. Mm. So I guess that's why they didn't come back. But yeah. I mean, a lot of the houses are occupied at the same time in this neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. A lot you, of traffic. Do you think now it's got a good sort of neighborhood feel to it? Yeah, yeah. This yeah. kind of project, this kind I mean, of restaurant. Just came back. I mean, it came back. We got uh, the restaurant. We have a snowball stand, barbershop, hair salon. Uh, we have a lot of businesses that's opened up along this avenue. Yeah, so yeah. pretty much when it came back, it's yeah. doing pretty good. Julio and the IC Change team now plan to scale up the project beyond the Gentilly district. Their dream is to find hundreds of Bryants and Destinies across the city. Of course there'll be challenges in getting the engagement, but the aim is crystal clear. To discover how the people of New Orleans experience flooding on a personal level, and to use their stories to inform planning decisions. However it pans out though, one thing's for certain. New Orleans will continue to embrace its love-hate relationship with water.